guys, welcome back to Throwback Thursday. By now you probably know how obsessed I am with using stencils in craft projects. And that's why I'm so excited to share today's segment of the Carol Duvall Show, because she uses stencils to create these beautiful bronze frames. Let's see how she does it. Welcome back. We are here with Linda Carter Lefko from Crafters Corner, Inc., who's showing us how to do a bronze powdered stenciled frame. Did I get that you all got right? It right? But if I go into a store and ask for bronzine, not bronze powder, but bronzine powder, you'll be able to find them. And you can al right. And you can also use powdered pigments. They sell oh. pigment powders, I believe it's called, <laughs> right? But and most of the craft stores. Oh, okay. But I prefer to use bronze powders. Okay, because that's the way it was done that's way, way back it was when. Done. Now these stencils, right. are these are really old stencils, these right? These are really antique stencils and they're cut on ledger paper from the 1840s. Paper was very precious and they saved it and reused it. Oh, they were re in the recycling, right. and these were right. cut by hand? All hand cut <gasps> stencils. But you're using these. <laughs> the stencils that we're going to be using today are commercially available, and they're cut on uh, with laser cutters on a, on a uh, kind of a plastic drafting film. Um, the bronze powders that we're going to be using are very, very light. They're like face powder, and we're going to be using the traditional colors that are available, the golds and the silvers but um, they're also available in all different kinds of shades of color. The brush that we're gonna be using is a regular stencil brush, except for it has, it's very, very dense, and the bristles are a little bit longer than normal. So it's dense, it's very, very soft, and then it will allow us to pick up the powders. So we have our stencils, we have a little area to tap off our powders with, and our, our powders on our palette. Um, we're going to begin by placing our stencil in the corner of our frame. This rose is going to sit right in the corner. Oh, and, and that's bad. You made it tacky, so it'll sit right there. Correct. Oh, okay. I do have to hold it with my fingers, though. I'm going to go into my palette, which is simply velvet stretched over some cardboard, and I'm going to pick up the powders, and holding that stencil in place, I'm going to start where my blossom is the brightest. Like any tool, you probably will need to reload that brush a couple times to get the powders to flow through the bristles of the brush. But once it, do, it starts, you can see how it works. Wow. Now, I'm also gonna go around the outside edge of the rose because that's where the blossom, the petals edge, the, sh the uh, intense color is around the outside edge too. So I'm gonna go all the way around and maybe polish up just a little heavier. And we're set to pull and remove the stencil off of our frame. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, pretty. I would go right ahead and I would place my leaf and kind of tuck it into my rose. And I'm going to place, you'll notice that it's hinged. I'm going to mm -hmm. place the veining. I'm going to pick up the powders, tap off my brush. I want to make sure that I don't go right into the rose with my stenciling. Then I'm going to, because it's hinged, I'm going to be able to lift up my Oh, and see if you've done right. it enough or right or whatever. And I'm going to go back in, pick up a little more powder. And again, I'm not going to cover the entire leaf with powder. I want some of that black, that beautiful background black to show through. You know what's so interesting is that silver, you look at it one way and it looks almost white. And then another way, the way I'm looking at it, it's just really silver. Yeah, it's great. So I would proceed to go around my frame and put, tuck as many uh, leaves in as I wanted to, and I could dress it up, and you can see what it looks and like. And this is what it looks like right. with that, and who needs color when you've got these two? They're absolutely gorgeous. It is important to remember that after you put your size on, you need to go back and you need to put a finish coat on. So you can use a varnish or you can use a shellac. Oh, okay, certainly to protect it and so right. you don't stick to it every right. time you go to touch it. Right. And we have, of course, the finished one. This week, this is supposed to be a mirror in here or a beautiful photograph. Oh, and I think we should take a look at a couple of these other things, like this gorgeous chest that we had a glance at before. And I can see the shine on there. And then an item that's probably familiar to a lot of folks. The Hitchcock chair, right? Yes, yes. All of a sudden I say, oh, yes, I've seen this technique before. It's wonderful. And thank you so much for teaching us thank about you. it. By the way, there is a book, The Art of Theorem Painting, by Linda Carter Lefko and Barbara Knickerbocker. Our thanks to Linda, our thanks to Michelle Newman, to Barbara Fletcher, and as always, our thanks to you. Goodbye. What I love about using stencils is that not only are they easy to use, but the result always looks so professional. Have you guys used stencils in any craft projects lately? Let me know in a comment down below because I'm always looking for new projects to try out, especially ones involving stencils. And if you want to see how I use them to create a beautiful accent pillow, I'll go ahead and link that video for you now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next week with a new Throwback Thursday. Bye guys!